Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya. Sim or Sim Naya. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So I came across this video where a representative Presley was doing her thing. See, one thing I love about black women is that I they really know how to stand on business. And there is nothing as beautiful as seeing a black woman standing on business. Now, you all already know what has been going on with Project 25. And now some people were talking about uh, uh Donald Trump's policy. I'm looking at his policy. His policy is kind of harmful to people that look like me. Why? Because I saw where they said critical race theory cannot be thought in school. I know they've already been working on that like you know for a longer time, right? But now it means that at any school that they are like you know that go out of there uh that disobeys the rule, right? Will probably not be funded so it may because nobody no school will, would want to take that risk so it means it's going to be no crt anymore so you all already know that like right from time your history uh makes them emotional like you know it hurts their feelings it's kind of violent you know why would they teach that and the other one was also talking about uh what um uh, discrimination of people that look like me when it comes to job and all that all these are the things that people will look at it's just amazing how some people are not being able to understand that uh, project 2024 is really very harmful to people that look like me and other people of color you know what let's get into this and decided to you know elevate her and make this a conversation so let's start off with this claim uh, about Donald Trump's platinum plan. But what other policies that do you want to highlight that Trump is pushing for his campaign that really showed themselves to you? I would just focus on the fact that he, when he um, did not secure the reelection, there was a platinum plan on the table that he consulted with Ice Cube and a couple other prominent black business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned it in my speech, but of course the shade room didn't post that. So nobody knows about it, mm -hmm. but that increases $500 billion of capital in the black community, brings back 500,000 jobs, gives incentives to big companies to hire felons, um, gives incentives to, of course, you know, there's opportunity zones, which are mentioned, which gives incentives to developers to come and revamp the area. Um, the fact that Trump just has a plan, period, for black people, and Kamala does not. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about it. Here is the platinum plan, and you can see that it was on Donald Trump's 2020 campaign website. That CDN at the top shows this is the old campaign website from 2020. Here's page two of it. You can see it in all its glory. It describes some of the things that you heard this young lady talk about regarding Donald Trump's alleged plans for Black America. But I want you to check out on this CNN headline about Donald Trump's proposed plans for Black America. I want you to just take a look here at the date, the date on this article. That is October 7, 2020. That's literally a month before election day in 2020. By then, Donald Trump had been president of the United States for nearly four whole years. So you're saying he only launched his plan for Black America at the end of his first four years? What was he doing the other three and a half years? Did he not have a plan for Black America before that? And please don't say historic funding for HBCUs because that was passed by the Democratic Congress. And don't say the STEMI also passed by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and them. That wasn't Trump. And now I just want to show you Donald Trump's current, his current campaign website. Okay, here we go. It's going to scroll right in front of me right now. Take a look. Take a look. And tell me, stop me when you see the platinum plan. Just going to keep scrolling. Do you see the platinum plan? Do you see that in his current website? This is his current website. Do you see the platinum plan? I don't see the platinum plan. Do you see the platinum plan? <laughs> What happened to the platinum plan? What I do see, however, is this. 
Donald Trump's current plan, which is in his current website, where he's showing his policies that he would implement in his second Trump term, cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, radical gender ideology, and other inappropriate racial or sexual or political content on our children. Sounds to me like he wants to ban black history and anything that looks or smells like the 1619 Project. Is that what you're asking black folk to be down with? Because I don't think that's the platinum plan. And in addition to that, what you are asking black voters to support is somebody who has a long history of being accused of flat out racism, specifically against black people. This is from the Associated Press. The federal government sued Donald Trump and his father's real estate company, which is the same company he runs now. He just runs it without the daddy because the daddy's gone for allegedly discriminating against black apartment seekers in the 1970s. Black pastors also accused the New York businessmen of stirring racial animus during the Central Park Five rape case in the 1980s. Native American groups criticized him for making derogatory remarks about tribes seeking to build casinos in the 1990s. Trump was also a leading voice of the birther conspiracy that baselessly claimed former president Barack Obama was from Africa and not an American citizen. He's also had like lunch with neo-Nazis and pretended he didn't hear it when someone in the crowd at one of his rallies screamed white power. But you know, you go on and support your boss. And to go right back to that discrimination against black renters during the 1970s, when again, Donald Trump was running the same real estate company that he runs now, the Justice Department, and we're talking about the Richard Nixon Justice Department, sued Donald Trump and his company and with his father for their alleged refusal to rent apartments in predominantly white buildings to black tenants. Tenants' uh, testimony showed that applications filled by black apartment seekers were marked with a C for colored. But again, if that's who you want to vote for, go for it. And I would just add this repeated claim that Kamala Harris has not put forward any policies is actually absurd. Literally, her policies are laid out in her TV ads. She lays them out in each of her speeches. I know them without even looking them up. They are literally a $25,000 down payment assistance for people who want to buy a home, ending the egregious gouging of renters by using regulations to stop these hedge funds from buying up apartments, whole blocks of apartments, and then jacking up the rent, replacing Donald Trump's massive tax cut for the super rich with a tax cut for regular middle class folks and deleting that old tax cut that he passed, which 80% of it went to the super rich, ending the tax for tipped workers who work in food service, allowing them to earn their tips tax-free and restoring the $3,600 child tax credit. Those are some of just her top line policies that she talks about all the time. If you literally watch the TV or even like have an active TikTok account, you literally know what her policies are. It's just actually crazy to say that she doesn't have any. And when it comes to things like helping HBCUs, literally the Biden-Harris administration just dropped $16 billion on HBCUs. Donald Trump's claim that he did this historic funding for HBCUs, he literally just renewed the Obama funding. He didn't do anything special. And the First Step Act, yes, it's great that about 1,600 people, a few, you know, a little over less than 2,000 people were given clemency under the First Step Act. But first of all, but Donald Trump had the fewest clemencies of any modern president. He pardoned the fewest people of any modern president. He barely did pardons. And when he did, it was normally what really looked like a quid pro quo, right? The former mayor of Detroit, Kwame Kilpatrick, who suddenly turns up campaigning for him. And look, I'm happy for anybody that got clemency from any president, even if it was Donald Trump. But let's not pretend he was some champion of men and women who have been incarcerated, because he was not. He also might be incarcerated himself because, you know, he's accused of a lot of crimes. So let's just not pretend that Donald Trump has some big agenda for black folks, because he doesn't. There's no proof that he ever did. He proposed this platinum plan one month before the campaign, before the presidential campaign in 2020. And then he lost, and then he dropped the platinum plan like it was hot.
but go on and vote for who you want to vote for. Just don't mislead people online and on these socials. Peace. Is there something funny? No. I didn't think so. Republican colleagues very often like to quote Dr. King, I don't know, maybe for some faux civil rights credibility or to pervert his words to suit your extremist needs while working actively to undermine his legislative legacy. Republican attacks on the EOC are part of their broader efforts to weaken civil rights protections. One of their goals plainly laid out in Project 2025, a 1,000-page bucket list of extremist policies. Mr. Berry, Chapter 18 of the Project 2025 Manifesto is about the Department of Labor. And you are the author of that chapter, correct? Lead author, yes. There's others, too. Yes, you are. I believe the American public should know exactly how you and the Republican majority that invited you to testify today want to sabotage the EEOC, rewrite the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and push all of us back to an era of Jim Crow racism. Uh, I'm shocked that my colleague across the aisle was in disbelief at our characterizations um, and assertions of, of racism and discrimination when even former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said the Republican side of the aisle looked like the most restrictive country club in America. We all know that Make America Great Again is about making America white only again. On the first page of Chapter 18, Project 2025, complains about how the Biden administration complains about how the Biden administration has been fighting for racial equity. On the next page, it calls for eliminating data collection on race and ethnicity and employment. On the page after that, it calls for rescinding an executive order signed in 1965 that prohibits discrimination in hiring by contractors. Mr. Berry, do these terrible ideas sound familiar? They're great ideas. These terrible ideas sound familiar. Of course they do. You came up with them. Mr. Berry, I find it shameful to advance a vision attacking the very policies and agencies that have helped black Americans secure jobs, earn a living, and provide for our families. This Project 2025 plan is policy violence, plain and simple. Its authors have placed such a large target on the EOC because of the incredible work the EOC is doing today. Last year alone, the agency filed more than 27,000 charges of race-based discrimination. These workers and their families have a pathway to justice, accountability, and healing because of the policies and regulations that Project 2025 is trying to get rid of. Ms. Wiley, how would workers be harmed by Project 2025's commitment to undermining crucial protections that are enforced by EOC and other federal agencies? Well, essentially, it guts the ability to both um, be able to have the rights and have enforcement and protection of the rights that we already have and we've been seeing improvements and advancements when we have been enforcing them. Um, and I'm also deeply concerned with any suggestion that we uh, should not be collecting data uh, or that labor rights, the rights to organize, which has been so important for workers across race, including white men, to ensure that they're getting uh, uh, fair wages and safe working conditions, all of these are actually in that chapter, and they threaten our workplaces for people who are white, for people of color, for people of all backgrounds in this country. And I think that's why we all need to be concerned, because it really is about all of us. That's right. They threaten our workplaces for every person who calls this country home. EOC offers essential protections that create workplaces where all of us can thrive, but Project 2025 aspires to be the realization of a decades-long crusade by Republicans to strip away this key pillar of the Civil Rights Act. As a founding member of the Stop Project 2025 Task Force, I look forward to showing and telling the American people exactly who you are, Mr. Berry, along with your extremist friends. I urge my colleagues to join me in building the inclusive world we know to be possible, one in which everyone, is there something funny? No. I didn't think so. Nothing funny about this. And in honor of my departed mother and for my 15-year-old daughter, I will do everything possible to stop you from building the world that you were hell-bent on doing. I urge my colleagues to join me in building the inclusive world we know to be possible, one in which everyone can show up to work free from discrimination. Thank you. I yield back. 
No, no, very big shout out to this beautiful woman. I think her name is uh, okay, uh, representative um, Freshly. She, I love the fact that she highlights the uh, the racism in the uh, project twenty twenty five. And the truth is that uh, some people are actually not saying this, and uh, or some people have not even taken the time to look at project twenty twenty five, or even try to read and understand what Project 25 is all about. So never took their time to understand all of this. But I see them all out everywhere, you know, doing some crazy things and are putting their support on somebody that probably might not do the very best for people that look like me, right? And looking at this, you all can understand from what Representative Presley was talking about she was also talking about uh, work discrimination. And you all already know this thing, like, you know, it's one of the challenges people that look like me face, like, you know, it's really very crazy, you know. And um, I have heard stories, I have seen stories, I have also reported stories of how people that look like me look for jobs for a longer time, probably try to change their names. And then the same company that refused to call them, call them back for interview. Or probably people that are looking for, example, looking for accommodations and they see them, they probably they sound so why? And when they show up in person and then they tell you sorry, like, you know, I thought, uh, yeah, this place is no longer uh, for rent or the, uh, there is no longer vacant and all of that. I mean, these are the things people should look at and then understand that some certain things, we all already know that some certain things has been affecting people that look like me from the onset. So do you want to still continue to sit? Do you want to continue to sit down and watch the same thing keep oppressing you? I mean, I think it's high time everybody wake up because it's a collective effort. Like, you know, you all don't have to sit down. I mean, like everywhere is divided. This person is going left. The other person is going right. I know we almost not like agree together. But what I am saying is that if like 80, 90 percent of us come out and do the right thing, Trust me, you all already know how powerful we are as people and, uh, and uh, how natural or influencers that we are. Trust me, the sky is the starting point, right? And then let's get back to, uh, I mean, like, you know, the policies for the other person and what does he really have in stock for. It's really amazing how I see black people all out there talking about how this man is going to change our life and how he is trying as much as we as he can to make sure that uh, we are like you know that we are kind of taking care of and all that, and then forgetting that uh, politics during um, uh, uh, during campaign period anybody can come out and tell you whatever they want to say. And uh, the last time that he worked, and oh, I don't know a lot he did aside from I think uh, uh, what's that called. Uh, I think the check he gave black people, he gave out that. I think that is also one of the reasons why a lot of people are just saying he, they want him to. But then whatever it is, you know, I hope we all make the right decision, right? And then now, um, CRT is also, a, I don't think this is new. It's been a long time that it's been under attack. But you all are watching everything that got to do with that CRT is about to die off because now they are saying any school that teaches that critical, uh, critical race th theory and all that that they won't fund them and the rest of it so what is that what like what are what do we what are we supposed to have so it means that we cannot talk about ourselves we cannot talk about our history we cannot talk about our origin how we started and the rest of it why because they hurt their feelings. Is that not enough reason already? Well, yeah, I am, like I keep saying, I don't tell people we are all adults and we are big enough to know what is good from what is bad, our left, our right. But whatever happens, I am wishing everybody luck. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.